Agencies are on a new alert tonight from the FBI and CISA after they found advanced persistent threat actors scanning federal systems in a new way. The advisory from the two agencies lists 15 mitigation steps the FBI and CISA say agencies should take. Brigadier General Greg Tuhill, U.S. Air Force retired president of Abgate Federal Group, former federal chief information security officer. Greg, thanks very much for coming on the program. As I read through this, I'm not sure as an amateur whether this is a big deal or not a big deal. Which is it? Well, just like Yogi Berra said, it's deja vu all over again. We've seen similar types of uh, alerts coming out of FBI and CISA. And I think this one is really triggered because they're seeing not only in the federal networks, but there's reports that are coming in from around the world where actors um, out there, uh, particularly those who are using ransomware such as Kring, have been scanning the globe looking for VPN vulnerabilities. This one particular one is attributed to a Fortinet patching uh, that a lot of folks haven't necessarily been done. And bad guys are looking across the world at VPN vulnerabilities and exploiting them. This is just another reminder that, hey folks, we need to patch and protect yourself against uh, bad guys. Again, reading this as an amateur, Greg, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I might have seen a silver lining to this cloud. The APT actors may be pre-positioning for follow-on data exfiltration or data encryption attacks to gain access to critical infrastructure networks to pre-position for follow-on attacks. Since the follow-on attacks didn't, haven't happened yet, apparently, are we catching this at the beginning? Are we seeing this at the beginning of the threat curve rather than the end when we go, oh no, they got us again? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I think uh, there's uh, ample reporting right now that shows that the attacks have already started. Uh, Ars Technica came out with an article uh, yesterday that spelled out uh, some of the ransomware attacks that folks in Europe have been seeing against critical manufacturing. And as we are seeing here in the United States, sometimes there's a, a, a time lag delay. But the fact of the matter is, for those uh, in the audience, uh, Fortinet and vulnerabilities that have already gotten patched, patches available, but equipment hasn't been patched, uh, bad guys are taking advantage of that. And on the same token, it's not just these Fortinet uh, vulnerabilities that are being exploited and scanned for, but VPNs in general, the Palo Altos, the Cisco, Citrix, Fortinet, any device that a vulnerability has been identified, you need to move quickly to patch because now with modern tools, folks can scan the internet looking for devices that aren't patched properly. I am puzzled, I must say, by the mitigation strategies. There are 15, as I mentioned, including immediately patch, and then it lists the ports that uh, this particular APT uh, was targeting. But some of this stuff, Greg, is the stuff we've been, you and I have been talking about for 10 years. Yep. Regularly backup data, air gap and password protect backup copies offline. Use multi-factor authentication where possible. Install and regularly update antivirus and anti-malware software on all hosts. I mean, duh. At what point do we say, what are you, what's happening that we still have to make these recommendations? Well, you know, it's deja vu all over again. And uh, I, I, I share the sentiment of duh with you. Uh, I think, you know, for our audience members, this is just one of another reminders of, hey, folks, we've been telling you the importance of patching. We are, got, we, we are receiving reports of critical manufacturing in Europe where folks have not necessarily patched and they've fallen victims to ransomware operators who have interrupted critical manufacturing processes in, in the commercial sector. Now we are uh, seeing within the federal government and here in the United States, similar tactics, techniques, and procedures where folks are scanning using just commercial off the shelf tools scanning, looking for folks that have not properly patched these uh, devices. And let's not forget, VPNs are about 25 years old. They came out the same year that the Palm Pilot was introduced. This is older technology. And if you're not going to patch it properly, you're wearing a cyber kick me son. And the government uh, through our FBI and our CISA partners are just trying to rem remind uh, folks hey, do the right things the right way and at the right time. That's due care and due diligence. And we're finding that a lot of organizations still aren't following it. 
I'm not laughing, grinning, because this concept is funny. It's terribly serious. The cyber kick me idea in my head was just more than I could keep a straight face to, Greg. Um, the, the ransomware issue that you raised a moment ago. It's striking to me that we've seen any number of references, uh, incidents of ransomware at the state and local level. We've seen it in the private sector. We've seen it in mm -hmm. the nonprofit sector. We haven't heard of one yet in the federal government. Why do you think that is? Well, just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean it actually hasn't happened. Uh, so th the fact of the matter is, is every organization out there in .gov, .mil, .com, .edu, anybody connected to the internet could fall victim to ransomware. And uh, you know, within the, uh, the government, our position uh, when I was still serving was, we're not gonna pay a ransom. No, we're not just we're just not going to do that uh, because that just encourages further bad behavior. Um, and within the federal government, uh, we don't have to because we've generally architected so that we can, in fact, either protect that data through offsite storage or other processes, or we might just write off the loss of that data. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is, is any organization that is connected to the internet needs to be postured to protect against ransomware attack. And these 15 uh, mitigations that are in that alert, they're, they're fair and prudent ones that we've been talking about for more than 10 years. And if you're not doing them by now, uh, you're behind and you're probably uh, not practicing due care and due diligence throughout your organization when it comes to cyber. Greg Tuhill, thanks very much as always. Thanks, Francis.